Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua community. I'm Ima Raphaia, and I'm coming only to the daughters of Tezion. This afternoon, we're going to talk about the kindness of a virtuous woman. And Rayak has given me scriptures to expound on this afternoon, so I shall. I want to encourage every daughter that's striving for, per for perfection that she can overcome all of the obstacles that are against her in this walk of life. And truly, daughters, if you shema, if you hear the messenger, you shall receive instruction. Yah would not put you here to walk in perfection without giving you the road map and a leader to lead and guide you in all truth. So before I begin my um, scripture reading, we're going to hear from our children this afternoon. And they're going to have a song for us and scripture that they're going to quote. So now we will hear from our little ones. Hallelujah. Psalms 122, the whole chapter. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the bed of Yahweh. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Yahushalayim. Yahushalayim is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of Yahweh, unto the testimony of Israel, to the Torah and to the name of Yahweh. For there I set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of Dawid. Pray for Shalom, Yahushalayim. They shall prosper that are hot by you. Shalom only within your walls, and prosperity within your palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Shalom be with thee. Because of the bed of Yahweh, our God, I will seek your tongue. woman. And how will a man of Almighty Yah know that this woman has kindness? We want to start with the scripture going to Shirak chapter 40 verse 17. And it reads, kindness is like a garden of blessings and compassion endures forever. So showing great compassion and caring, it only comes from Almighty Yah. 
It comes from a daughter that has learned the scriptures. It comes from a daughter that has heard the messenger and she took heed to her own ways. Daughters, we've learned many things, but it's not according to Torah, then it's not the will of Almighty Yah. Can I tell you, my mother taught me many things and there were things that helped me in this walk of life. But when it came to obeying all of the commandments of Almighty Yah, I didn't know how to. I struggled, say thou shall not lie. Well, I found myself in, in a situation, I would just lie to get myself out of it. So when you break one of the commandments, then you're guilty of them all. So showing compassion and caring, it comes from Almighty Yah. The seed is there, it lays dormant, but when you hear the messenger, it will bring that seed to life. Shirak 40, verse 18. To labor and to be content with that a man has is a sweet life. But he that finds a treasure is above them both. Verse 19. Children and the building of a city establish a man's name. But a blameless wife is accounted better than them both. Daughters, when a man truly has children and has great treasures, but to have a wife that is hard-headed and rebellious, it destroys everything about that marriage. It destroys everything about that man. But a wife that is clean, honest, that walks upright, that is virtuous, that is willing to take on any challenge that life presents to itself. She overcomes them all. And we as women, we must learn that we must walk according to the Torah, not according to our feelings or what mama think or what auntie thinks, but we must learn that we must obey the Torah of Almighty Yahweh and keep the commandments of Yah. When a woman learns the ways of Yah through the, through the hearing of the Torah, her husband is always on her mind. How can I please him? What can I do to make him happy? Study to be quiet. I know he doesn't want to hear me for my much speaking because we do speak a lot. We want to tell him everything. And sometimes he just likes to be quiet and just to look at you and behold your beauty. You're beautiful to him. It doesn't matter what any other man thinks, as long as your husband, your ish, think that you're beautiful. You know, even with my hair being kinky, I love my kinky hair. It was given to me by Almighty Yah. And Rayak loves my hair. I don't care about what anybody else thinks or how they feel, as long as he's satisfied with it. Hallelujah. And that's how every wife should think. And your desire is towards your husband. What he wants, what he likes to eat, how he's feeling. That is so important, daughters. Not what your next door neighbor is thinking, but what does your ish think of you? How do I please him in every way? Hallelujah. So what are the treasures of a kind of man's wife or wife that is blameless? So we're going to look at Torah again, and we want to go to Proverbs, Mishli 19. And 14. It says, House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from Almighty Yah. So, when a woman knows how to discipline herself, she knows how to strive to keep the Torah, she is from Almighty Yah. When she is wise, a teacher of tough things, she's one that prosper in her way. She has skills in truth, her insight, she comprehends matters, and she studies to be quiet. That's a wife from Almighty Yah. And when she opens up her mouth to counsel anyone, there will be words of wisdom. She's not caught up in foolishness. She's not running from auntie house to granny's house to best friend's house. She knows how to stay at home and she works willingly with her hands. Hallelujah. And her desire is to please her husband. This is a truly a gift from Almighty Yah. 
She is able to always, daughters, always give wise counsel. When a daughter is doing something wrong, she doesn't go and tell that daughter, you keep praying about it. You just shoot, you turn. You turn from your evil, corrupt ways, and you know what the commandments say, then you do them. You know, I, I've, over the years, I've seen many women, older women, like myself, and they know that a daughter is not doing that which is right. She wants to go out and have fun. Well, that's not what Torah commands. You have children, you have a husband, you have to stay at home. Your de desire is to please him. Your desire is to keep your house clean, to cook, to work with your children. I am so glad that I'm in a place like this where I can work willingly with the children, with the daughters. You say, well, do you get tired? Why, sure I do. This old body, yes, it gets tired, but I don't get tired in well-doing. This is tough to do. It's, good. it's a good thing to do when you're working with your children, your grandchildren, when you see daughters striving to do that which is right. It's a good thing. Hallelujah. And I told y'all for that. Praise y'all. The wisdom of a daughter, we must be able to speak righteous things to other daughters of Zion so that they can press on as never before. We shouldn't mind being set apart. I don't mind not looking like the world. I have no problem with that. They say, well, I, they don't like your dress. I don't care with that. I want to dress to please Almighty Yah. He says, cover yourself. So we as women... Age women, we must set the pattern, we must set the example, we must stand strong in our stance so that we can help other daughters. We're in an hour now, a crucial hour, where there are not many that want to walk this way. I understand that, but I want to please Almighty Yah. So as I strive to do that which is right, the daughters can glean from that, and it gives them the courage to press on to do that which is righteous before Almighty Yah. Yah didn't tell us to paint ourselves up. He didn't tell us to go buy hair and make yourself beautiful with, with extension in your hair. He didn't tell us to do that. We give him Torah for what we have. You learn to work with what you have. Hallelujah. No, don't go buy extensions to put in your hair. Just learn to care what you have. Learn to take care of it. He didn't tell you to look like the world or go, go out buying expensive furs. He didn't tell us to do that. You take what you have. You go to the market. You buy fabric. And you sew. You make your own clothing. You make your own fashion statement. And can I tell you, daughters, you give us a week or two. And we're going to come back and we're going to show you how we've made our own clothing. How we make our own fashion statement. No, we don't want to look like the world. We want to look set apart. Well, you call it holy. We're well, Kodash. We're well, Kodash daughters of Tazaria. My daughter is eight months pregnant. She's going to make her outfit for you to see that you can, even though you're expecting, you still can look Kodash and set apart. You don't have to wait on the world to design your clothing. Because if they're operating in wickedness, how do they know what set apart dress is like? They don't know. So that's why we have to design our own clothing. Do you buy? Sure, I go to, I don't, I, I usually order online, but I know I buy that which doesn't look all worldly. I cover my arms, I cover my chest. My private parts are not for anyone to see, but my ish, my husband. Hallelujah. So I want to go to the book of wisdom, verse 6, ch I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 11. It says, wherefore, set your affection upon my word. Long for them. Set your affection on Almighty Yah. Long for them, and you shall be instructed. Wisdom is magnificent and never fades away. Yes, she is easily seen of them that love her and is found by those who seek her. So, daughters, when you truly want understanding, of this truth, you must seek Almighty Yah. You must seek her with all your nephesh, all your being. You must hear the messenger. When you hear that truth, you go back and you look over it and you study it and you find words to help you as an individual. 
You want to be set apart. You want to be instructed. Wherever you go in life, daughters, you're going to be instructed. Either you receive it in truth or you receive it in oppression. If you want a job and you don't do as they asked you to do, you're going to be oppressed. You'll never get it right. You'll be pushed from pillow to post. And can I tell you, daughters, you will never excel. You will always be unhappy because you don't know how to receive instruction. Over these many years, I have been instructed in His truth. And it has made me free. It has made me happy. And it has showed me my evil, corrupt ways that I don't have to continue in my ways, but I can strive in the ways of this truth through Yahshua HaMashiach. It says, wisdom is magnificent and it never fades away. Yes, she is easily seen of them that love her and is found by those that seek her. She hastens to them that desire her and making herself first known to them. Daughters, as we learn to keep this truth, it is a daily thing we must do. You can't just do right today and not do right for the rest of the week. It's something you must practice every day of your life if you want to please Almighty Yah. I told you Yah for His truth because His truth has made me free from me. Being haughty, thinking that you're better than somebody else when well, you're not better than anybody. If you don't bathe daughters, You'll stink just like the woman that sleeps up under the bridge. So it's something you must practice every day. You bathe every day. You eat every day. So you must practice this Torah living every day of your life so that others may see and that you may come up into Almighty Yahweh's standards. It says, Whoso seeks wisdom, if you seek wisdom early, she shall be found of you. She is sitting at your door. So the only thing you have to do is open that door of wisdom and it shall make you free. Hallelujah. It says, wisdom speaks to the man. Shirak 7 and 19. It says, do not deprive yourself of a wise, and as you would call it, a good wife. For her charm is worth more than gold. When you find a woman that is striving daily to please Almighty Yah, and she denies herself of the worldly things, she sets herself apart, she works willingly with, you, with her hands, that's a good wife. That's the one you want to marry. You don't want to marry a woman that is loud. She can't contain herself. She's looking at every man. She's not content with just a man that has his eyes on you, but she's looking for every man to look at me. Look at me. Look at my chest. That's not the one. But that one that works willingly with her hands, that studies to be quiet, that's always willing to help, that's the one. That's the wife. Hallelujah. It says, so a pattern of a wise, wealthy daughter of Zion, she must be as such. Want to go to Luke chapter 1, verse 5. It says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Yehuda, a certain Kohen named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And his wife was of the daughters of Aharon. And her name was Elizabeth. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before Yahweh, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of Almighty Yahweh, and they were blameless. And they had no children, because that she, Elizabeth, was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now this story is just saying these two loved Almighty Yah, and they practiced living toward truth every day of their lives. And even though Elizabeth was well stricken in age, because of her obedience according to the Torah, and because she loved Almighty Yah, Yah blessed them with a son. That Yah blessed them 
because of their obedience according to Torah. So daughters, when you walk in Torah, Yah will not withhold any tough thing from you. You say, well, you never bear children. No, I never bear children. And even as I'm getting old, I still don't want to bear children because I have so many here. I work with the children here. Our daughters are still producing children. So I get a uh, privilege every day to work with children, to show them kindness, to instruct them. And yes, I paddle hippies too, if need be. So I, I'm not, Yah has given me tough gifts. And I don't count him slack. He's been, he has been very kind to me. Me being able to come to you and share that with you now, I'm happy. Daughters, I'm closing my right mind. I'm breathing Yah's air. I have activity of my limbs. I, get, I walk every day. I'm able to work with the daughters every day. What more can I ask for? I'm in my place as a mother and as a daughter of Zion. So I have no complaints today. I have much, and I can give Yah Toda for that today. Hallelujah. It says, a daughter, she must render to her ish. So you say, what must she render to her ish? Let us go to the scriptures. I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. It says, let the husband render to the wife due benevolence. And likewise, wife also render due benevolence. And you say, well, what are you saying, Ema? The husband must show kindness, tender, uh, tenderness, gentleness, affection, warmth, concern, care, friendliness, tolerance. We must tolerate each other, helpfulness, and many more. So as the husband shows that, so must the wife. We must learn to be caring. It's not that the husband's got to care and, and he sees how hard you work, but it works hand in hand. You help each other. You show kindness to each other. When I've worked all day in the dining hall, preparing meals, at the end of the day, Ray I would sometimes just do dishes for me. And I'll tell him, you don't have to do that. I don't mind doing the dishes, even though he makes a mess. I don't mind cleaning up after my ish. Because he's been kind to me. He's been faithful by me. So in all of that, at the end of the day, we render due benevolence to each other. He likes to make up the bed for me sometimes, but the way he makes it up, I tell him, I got it, don't worry about it. So that's what we should do for each other. You shouldn't worry about him coming in after a hard day doing anything. That's what we're supposed to do, daughters. Can I tell you, Yah has made us and equipped us that we can do what things we need to do right there in the home. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So to continue on, this part of the teaching is talking about the good thing. And you say, what good thing? The good or the tough thing from Almighty Yah. And it identifies as the wife. So the wife is a good thing or tough thing from Almighty Yah. The riches of a good wife that brings favor. We want to go to Proverbs. Proverbs 18, 22. It says, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of Almighty Yah. It is not good for a man and a woman to be unequally yoked, but a righteous man and a righteous woman, those that are keeping toward truth, those two should be married. If a man is not saved and a wife is not saved, they're not walking in truth, then it's okay for them to marry. But it would not be the will of Almighty Yah for the man to be unrighteous and the woman righteous to marry. Because that's an unequal balance. And they're going to have trouble in that marriage. Hallelujah. So whosoever findeth a wife. 
they find a good thing. And the good thing comes from Almighty Yah. Everything that Yah is, it is good. It's tough. So anything that you receive from Almighty Yah, daughters, it is tough. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 26 and 8. And Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And this act was good. You would call it good, but I call it tough. It was tough from Almighty God. He brought up people that had been in bondage for 400 years and with a mighty hand only by the hand of Almighty Yah, he brought those people out. Can I tell you, when he brought them out, they didn't have to worry about food. They didn't have to worry about clothing. They didn't have to worry about shoes. Their shoes grew on their feet. And people look at this as if it was a fairy tale. But this is the truth coming from Almighty Yah. When we hear these stories, most of the time, because, I, can I tell you, I thought that way. I thought this is a fairy tale. This can't, that only happened to those people. Can I tell you daughters, and I say it every time I come before you, I was young and now I am old and I have seen the hand of Almighty Yah. How he has delivered me, the wretch that I was. I was not worthy of the kingdom and I was not fit for hell. So by these many, many years that he's brought me through and he showed me how to live this way by hearing the messenger, I have been blessed. I'm closed in my right mind, so you can't deceive me. I know the truth. The only way I can be, can be deceived is I'm driven away with my own filthy lust. And can I tell you, Doris, your lust will get you hell. So I have learned the ways of truth that I can help other daughters. It's not about me. There are no big eyes and big U's here. It's only people striving to do that which is righteous. So as I've learned this truth by hearing the messenger, it has made me free. And I can truly say that I am free, and I'm free indeed. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 9. And he has brought us into a place and has given us this land even a land that flows with milk and honey. Verse 10. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruit of the land, which you, O Yahweh, has given me. And you shall set it before Yahweh, your Abba. And you shall, it says worship, you shall shahai him before Yahweh, your Abba. I want you to shahai me, for this is a tough thing that I have done unto you. Y'all wants us to worship him. It's a tough thing when you rise in the morning to give Yah Toda that you're alive. You can get up out of the bed. Yeah, I'm a little bit slower getting up out of the bed, but I know it's by the hand of Almighty Yah. It's no power that I have of my own. My thinking didn't come from myself. It came from Almighty Yah. So that's a good thing to give him Toda for what he's done for you this day. Even as the sun rises and as the going down of the sun, if you still have breath in your body, you should give him Toda. Thank you, Almighty Yah, for your kindness, for your keeping me this day. I was able even to talk to my baby brother. My baby brother is 62 years old. He's in a wheelchair, so we're able to talk. We're able to communicate. So I give Yah Toda that he can see my life and he knows it's for real. He knows I'm not playing. There's no pretense here. It's for real. And as I live with the daughters here in this place, what a wonderful thing. Yah has taken just a few people from out of the world that we can live with each other. We tolerate each other. What a good thing that is. Because can I tell you, there are people that say black folks can't live together. Well, we are, I am, yes, I am, I'm a black woman. I'm a Hebrew Israelite woman, and we can live together. We live together, we cry together, we pray together. 
We have fun times together. We work with our children together. So when they say that, that's a lie. That's a lie from Hasatan. We can't. There's nothing we cannot do. Do we are sure how much she is? It shows you how to be disciplined. It shows you how to press past your correct flesh and how to consider somebody else. So it's not all about me, daughters, but it's about how I please Yah. I want him to be pleased with every aspect of me, my life, every second of the day. You have to stop and think, did I say that correctly? Did I entreat that sister right? So I always have to, that's what the Torah would do. Keeping the, com the commandments of Yah will make you check yourself out. Hallelujah. I don't care what the world thinks. I want to please the one who has created me. Hallelujah. Told Verse 26, it says, And you shall rejoice in every good thing which Yah your Abad has given to you and to your house and you and the Levites and the strangers that is among you. So even when strangers come among them, we show them when you come into the bed, you lift your hands up in the bed. You give told out to that which is spoken. Because even you being in a place like this, this is a good thing that you learn that people of Yah can live together. Hallelujah. We are honoring our ish. And how is this developed? By faith in Yahshua, which teaches us how to do those things that are good. So daughters, when you honor your ish, your husband, this is a good thing that you should do every day. We as women of color, we should honor our men. We should exalt them. We should tell them there's nothing that they can't do through Yahshua HaMashiach. So as we set ourselves as examples, not trying to tell them what to do, it's the way you live your life. And he will examine you. And he'll know that this, this it must be Almighty Yah that's in her life, that she does what she does. Hallelujah. We want to go to Philemon, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, hearing your love and your faith, your emuna, which you have towards the master, Yahshua, and towards all, not holy, but the Kodash people of Yah, that the communication of your faith may, be, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing, tub, which is in you, in Yahshua HaMashiach. Every tough thing that you do, daughters, you must say it's because of Yahshua HaMashiach. Not because you're just so special, but because you've learned the disciplines of Almighty Yah. So you can give him the praise and the toda for what things you do do that are righteous. Hallelujah. Psalms 34 and 9. O oh, fear Yahweh, you his kedushans, for there is no want to them that fear him. Did you hear that? When you're doing that which is righteous daughters, you will never go lacking. I'm not saying for just things that you just want, want, want all the time. I've been there. But when you come to the completeness in Almighty Yahweh, the things that are needed in your life, Yah will add those things. He will not let his people just suffer for no reason at all. Hallelujah. So if you learn how to feel mighty Yahweh, there are great rewards. Psalms 34 and 10. It says the young lion, they do lack, and they suffer hunger. But they that seek almighty Yah shall not want any good thing. So whatever things there are that are good unto Almighty Yah, for the people of Yah, you will, Yah will grant them unto you. Hallelujah. He will grant them unto you when you walk and you keep this truth. So a true wife that does tough things, there will be nothing withheld from her. Hallelujah. Nothing will be withheld from your daughter. When you're striving to do that, which pleases Almighty Yah. Psalms 84, verse 9. It says, Behold, 
O Yahweh, our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand days elsewhere. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Abba than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And you hear, I've heard this over the years when women say, I'd rather be a doormat in Yas Bayat than to be with wicked. And I understand that now. Yes, I'd rather be the doormat in a place of righteousness than to be in the house of those that are wicked, that practice wickedness. That you, you say, well, what's wickedness? When you find young women always sleeping around or young men sleeping around or men just spitting out babies everywhere. And they say, well, I buy my baby's pampers. What is that? Children need more than just pampers. They need to be nurtured. They need to, be, they need to have a structured life. They need guidance. They don't come with a road map knowing what's right and what's wrong to do. So that's why they need both mother and father. And wickedness is when you find people doing drugs and I say they're going out to nightclubs. That, to me, that's wickedness. And you know what else I think wickedness, well, I know what wickedness is. When people say they love Yah and they defy the Torah, they lie, they cheat, they steal. And you say you love Yah. Well, you can't do all those. Even if you do one, you're breaking the commandments of Almighty Yah, and you're guilty. You're guilty of them all. Verse 11. It says, For Yahweh, the sovereign master, is a sun and shield. Yah will give favor and honor. No tough thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. So when you walk up right, daughters, he will keep you in this straight, narrow path. See, the path, it is narrow. You can't even back up. It's narrow and it's tight. And you got to press every day to do that, which is righteous before him. Hallelujah. It says, O Yahweh of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in you. So daughters, when you trust in Almighty Yah, there is no tough thing that you need that he will not give unto you. So as we practice this walk, as we share counsel one with another, Yah will give you that righteous mind to know what's right to do. You should have shalom in your mind. I have shalom today. Hallelujah. And when a daughter asks for counsel, I don't have to pray about it. Because the way I walk before Almighty Yah, I can sit there and hear the matter out and I'll know how to judge it righteously. And that's what we should do. You must live it. You must think it. You must be a doer so that you can help others. You can't say do as I say, but don't do as I do. We must be doers of this Torah truth. Hallelujah. So we want to go to Psalms 92 and 1. It says, so the gift to man, this is a good, tough gift from Almighty Yah. She will be a rejoicing to him. He will praise Almighty Yahweh for that wonderful gift, that daughter, that ish, Ishah, that keeps the commandments of Almighty Yah. So Psalms 92 verse 1, it is a tough thing to give thanks to Yah and to sing his praises for Yah's name, O Most High. Verse 2, to show forth Yah's loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. So Yah shows us his loving kindness in the morning and every evening he's faithful unto us and as faithful as he is unto us he wants us to be faithful also verse 3 it says upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the sorcery upon the harp with a solemn sound Yah is faithful 
we should make a joyful noise unto Yah every day of our life that he grants us life. Hallelujah. So the daughter, she represents the tough thing that Yah will perform. Yahshua promised happiness will come to his elect. Happiness will come to his elect. Let's go to Jeremiah 33, verse 14. It says, Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised through Yahshua to the house of Israel El and to the house of Yahudah. So, what tough thing is Yah talking? He's saying those that practice Torah truth, those people are my elect. Yah comes to every man. And when he comes to every man, every man is not the chosen one of Almighty Yah. But those that keep the commandments, that practice this truth every day, those are the elect of Almighty Yah. Jeremiah 15. In those days, and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness, Yahshua, to grow up to die weed. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. And as we the people of Yah, we must judge ourselves by this truth, which is the righteous truth of Almighty Yah. We must judge ourselves every day. We must examine ourselves and see if we're doing that which is pleasing unto Almighty Yah. Verse 16. In those days shall Yahudah be delivered, and Yerushalayim shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. And Yahweh is our righteousness. We must practice the commandments every day of our lives. We must examine ourselves. So wife, husband, you are not one another's enemy. Your desire is fulfilled in knowing, as Saul speaks, knowing you have a tough thing to be happy and the husband must learn how to love his Ishaw. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? It says they zealously affect you, but they desire to, dom to dominate you and exclude you from Israel that your desire may be to serve them. So we must be zealous to do tough works, daughters. We don't worry about what anybody else says. We're not each other's enemy. The husband and the wife, they're not enemies. That's why you must marry someone that's walking in this truth and is striving to keep the commandments of Almighty Yah. So you be helpers one of another. So your ish can tell you the truth and you can walk truthful and honest before Him. Galatians 4 and 18. But it is tough to be zealous and to affect always in a good, tough thing. And not only when I am present with you. This is Saul so, speaking, but he's saying, do tough always. Don't only do it when someone is present around you just for show, but do that which is righteous when no one else is looking. The eyes of Yah are in every place, beholding the tough and the evil. So the seal of a man's home, Yahweh's seal, she is a tough thing. The wife, she is a tough thing when she strives to keep the commandments of Almighty Yah. Shirak 42 verse 1. Of the following things, do not be ashamed. And do not let partiality lead you to sin. Verse 2. Of the Torah of the Most High is his covenant. And of rendering 
judgment to justify and acquit the wicked. We must correct our ways and we must follow after righteousness. Daughters, when you're doing that which is wrong and you know that you're doing wrong, you must shoot, you must turn from your corrupt ways. It's wrong for us to speak rudely and out of place to our ish. It's wrong to think that you got to tell him or show him how to walk in this truth. Only thing, you just be a doer. You do that which is righteous. And he will inquire, what is this? He know. can I tell you, a man knows when he has a tough thing. He knows. He knows when he's blessed of Almighty God. And then the man knows when he has trouble in his home also. When the wife plucks down her own house. When she can never be content. She's never happy. Just got to have more, more, more than he knows that this is not a tough gift from Almighty Yah. But he must instruct her in what's righteous to do. And then he has to understand that she is the weaker vessel. Doris, we don't take advantage of that because we're the weaker vessel. We still must practice that which is righteous. Yah gives us this truth so that we can examine ourselves and come up in this truth. Hallelujah. Shirak 42 and 3. It says, of keeping the accounts with a partner or with traveling companions and of dividing inheritance of friends, of accuracy with scales and weights, and of acquitting much or little. Can I tell you, daughters, what the understanding that I'm getting from this, when you have friends or partners or fellowship with daughters, or your kinsmen, and you know they're not doing righteous. Character, you still have to weigh the matter out. You still have to judge them righteously. If they're going to cause you to stumble in your walk, then separate yourself. Y'all told Abraham to come from amongst his kinsmen because your kinsmen are going to destroy you. Because your love, your love is going to be greater towards them than towards the one who has created you. So we must weigh the matter, and we must learn to love Almighty Yah. You can't please your kinsmen. You can't please your friends. We want to please Almighty Yahweh. It's almost like the ant saying, don't step on me. I'll kill you. Well, how's the ant? You're bigger than the ant now. And it's the same way with us. Yah has created us that we should learn how to live before him. Our desire is to please him in our everyday living, the way we think, how we love him. He's loved us so much, he has sent Yahshua to suffer many tribulations for you and me, that we should shoo from our evil ways and strive every day to please him. Hallelujah. Shorak 42, verse 6. It said, where there is an evil wife, a seal is a good thing. And where there are many hands, lock things up. So where there is an evil wife, that, that's, that's a seal unto the man that you're going to have to sit down with her and instruct her what's righteous to do. You know, when you marry outside, you know that you've done, really, you've done the wrong thing. You don't want to just put her away, but you sit down with her. You instruct her, instruct her in righteousness and how she can shoot from her evil ways. Hallelujah. A tough thing, her seal is in her mind to honor the Torah and to honor her husband, her ish. So a wife that understands this Torah living, she knows how to govern herself. She knows how to be that example that Yah is looking for. And daughters, as we learn this truth, we really have to examine ourselves. We've learned many things over the years, but it's not according to the Torah. And you can't help anybody. If you're walking in wickedness and in the lust of your flesh, you can't help no one else. So until you start practicing this truth and getting all this empty baggage out of you, and those things that don't please y'all, that's the only way you're going to help someone else. Here in this place, we teach the daughters how to be keepers at home, 
how to love their husband. Yah doesn't want us out there working amongst the world where we're chummy with men out there on your job. You're chummy with them. You're making conversation with them. You're happy, happy, happy. And then when you come home, your husband say, can you get me a glass of water? And you about snap his head off. That's not the will of Yah. You say, what do I do? You start keeping the commandments of Yah. You start praying and fasting and seeking Him with everything that is within you. And Yah will make you free. Remember, He will not withhold any tough thing from a daughter that is keeping and striving to do that which is right. We have to understand that most of women like being out there. Can I tell you, that's how you know that you really don't love Almighty Yahweh completely because you got one foot in the world and the other foot trying to pretend you're doing what's right and your heart is divided. Y'all want one that is complete. Hallelujah. And the only way you're going to be complete, you must seek him with your whole being. Now we want to go to 2 Baruch. Chapter 20, verse 3. It says, Now, however, remember everything which I command you and seal it in the interior of your mind. The things that Yah has shown us, don't let them slip your mind. Don't easily forget what he's taught us. Don't easily forget where he's brought you from. See, daughters, I know where Yah has brought me from. Through much hardship, tribulations, but I didn't get weary. And not only did I thank Yah for my ish, but because of his faithfulness, it has helped me over these many years. As committed as my ish is unto Almighty Yah, it has helped me that I can help these other young daughters here in this place. And other women that call here, I can instruct them in this truth. But it only begins with you. Everything in life begins with you. How you respond, how you receive the truth, how you say there's another way. There's only one way. There are not two ways. There are not three ways. There's only one, uno. One way to truth. You must shamak. Yah gives us leaders. You call them preachers, messengers, pastors to lead his people in truth. I haven't shared that with my brother today. If, you're, if your shepherd is not there to instruct you, to help you along this way, you're going to be lost. You can't go on your feelings and your emotions. You must hear the messenger that Yah has chosen. And you know that messenger by the life that he lives, the way he shows kindness towards the people. It's not about him living on a, in a big mansion. It's not about him driving a Rolls Royce. It's not him being chauffeur driven, but by his labor and his heart for the people. That he suffer loss, that he may gain the sheep. The sheep knows the voice of the messenger, a stranger they will not follow. So even though Yah gives this truth, he, he shares it amongst the, the heathens but they don't always receive it. So you'll know those that receive it because they are the very elect. They discipline themselves, they pray, they fast, they empty themselves out, and what the Torah commands, they do. So we must be doers of this truth. You can't help anybody if you're not a doer. How are you gonna tell a sister she needs to come off her job when you're out there working? How are you gonna tell a sister she needs needs to love our husband and to wait on him when you're not waiting on your ish. So in order for you to help somebody, you've got to be a doer, a true doer of this word. You must guard and protect this Torah truth. That's the only way you're going to be made free. It says, Oh, that a guard were set over my mouth and a seal of prudence upon my lips that it keep me from falling, so that my tongue destroy me not. Your own tongue can destroy your daughters. It's what you speak and utter out of your mouth. That's what destroys you. Not my thoughts, it's your thoughts that destroy you. So as we govern our Ru'ah, 
We examine ourselves. We want to be pleasing unto Almighty Yah. I told you, told Almighty Yah that I was able to come before you again. I have a few more scriptures, but I'm going to stop at this time. But I want, I pray that I've helped just one daughter of Zion that is striving to please Almighty Yah. And as many times as Rayak asked me to come back, I will come back. I will take time and share scripture with the daughters of Zion. I enjoy doing this. Yet I always have to examine me, and I do. But I told Yah for being able to just share a little that Yah has granted me over these many years to learn. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So may Yahweh Baruch you all this evening. Again, we will meet with you all again soon. And also, I just want to continue sharing the great meals that we prepare here. My daughters and I, we prepare great meals. We take great delight in cooking, and every woman should. Even if you have to go on YouTube and get recipes, always experiment. Always experiment. I love preparing foods for the people of Yah. It's a great delight unto me. And I told Yah for being able to come to you and share this truth with you because this truth will make a difference in anyone's life. So told Yah for all things, it is a good thing to be able to share with you this Torah truth. Yahweh Baruch, you daughters of Zion, and again the daughters here at Teshua community, sends greetings, and I will come back soon with more Torah truth. Shalom, shalom. Have an excellent day, evening.